there's actually a lot more pseudo elements and pseudo classes out there than a lot of people realize and some of them let us come up with solutions that you can do with a couple of lines of CSS rather than trying to engineer more complex solutions. So in today's video we're going to be looking at three pseudo classes that you might not know about, you might not have ever used, that give us nice elegant solutions to common problems that can come up from time to time. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials and explore the wonders that are CSS. And I'm really excited for this one because pseudo classes are things that we know the basics of. We know things like hover and focus and that and we use them all the time. Uh, but we don't always run into situations every single site where you need to use the ones I'm going to be looking at in this video. But they're the types of ones that can really help you out in specific situations. So let's go and dive in and take a look at what they are. All right, so the very first thing I want to look at is an issue where sometimes you go and you have these sites that where then there's like a navigation that brings you to different parts on the page. So we're all on the same page here and we click and it brings us to that section. But we sometimes run into issues with that and we're going to look at a few of the fixes and one of them is going to be using a pseudo element and I'll throw a few extra bonus tips into this one uh, as well as we go through it. Um, so the first one is it's not really obvious that we're on the same page when this just jumps around. So we could uh, do an HTML and throw in a scroll behavior uh, smooth, just like that. And what that does is it well makes our smooth scrolling come in. All right, so now we can see when we scroll around, we go around, but as I said, you might click on section three and think that it's actually bringing this into view. So this is where our first pseudo element comes in and I've wrapped each one of these in actually a section. So, you know, your markup might be a little bit different, but I'm just gonna say section target, just like that. And this means if something is the target of it might when I click my link um, and I'm, I'm in code pen so we can't see um, the, the URL changing but normally you get the hashtag there followed by the section uh, or the ID. So when it becomes the target like that we can do uh, something interesting and we and on this I am going to use an outline and not a border for this. Um, a border would actually have size to it so it can impact the page whereas an outline shouldn't do that. So outline will do a three pixel Go dotted red just so it stands out. I'm not saying to use this for your own. Uh, you could come up with more elegant solutions than this. But now when I click section one, you can see it's actually highlighting section one or section two or then down to section three and it's showing me what section I've clicked on when I've done that. So that's kind of cool. And you could even go a step further. You could say section target and then say H2. Um, or, uh, no, let's leave this one like that. And we'll just do a section target. H, uh, we'll do an H2 like that, so it's only if it's a direct child, and we can say color is purple. And now, if I click on section three, not only has that changed, but my H3 there has changed too. And again, I wouldn't necessarily want to make it <laughs> purple like that. This is getting kind of ugly, but just to show you some of the possibilities uh, that can open up with this, and you will see section two has multiple H2, so both of them have changed. Um, so just, but just to show you a few uh, different ways that we can sort of style things and play around with things a little bit right there. So I'm going to take that one off because uh, I don't really like it. Um, now another thing you might notice is when you go to section one, it really lines up with the top of the page, which isn't super nice. This isn't a pseudo uh, class. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on my HTML here and you don't have to have um, smooth scrolling on for this. We're going to add a scroll padding top and I'll do three rem, but I mean the number is up to you. And that just means that when I go to section one, it's actually going to keep like a three rem of padding there, or we can go to section two, or we can go section three doesn't influence it because it doesn't reach the top of the page, but uh, we can use that. And scroll padding is an interesting property. You can do a bit more with it than just this, uh, but just to show you that's possible, like it also be really useful if you have a sticky nav and you want to make sure that the elements don't slide underneath your sticky navigation. Um, so things like that could be useful. So there we go. That is my target with a few little bonus tips along the way as well. And is it just really, really fast here actually. If we turn off the scroll behavior, say you don't want it, you'll see it still keeps that scroll um, padding there. So that's not because we have smooth scroll on. So a nice little fun tip right there. And the next one I want to look at is something that's, a, this one I actually think could be pretty useful. And actually I did a video a while back that looked at sort of a way you can hack that to make a CSS only light box. You know a lot with target. Um, these next two are a little bit less popular. You probably won't need them as often, but they can come in in interesting cases. Um, so actually, I'm going to change my content here just really fast, and I'm going to comment out all my sections. And what I want to look at now is a pseudo element, um, or a pseudo class, I should say, and it's going to be P, and there's two different ones we're going to look at. Um, one is only child. So you've probably heard of nth child, and you have one, two, three, or first child, last child. 
And one that I never see talked about is Only Child. And where this is interesting is, let's say you had a blog and the blog has different types of content. Sometimes it's a really long form one that has lots of content and other times you just want something quick, a, a, a single, just a single paragraph. It's like, a, like something, it's a bit more inspirational. It's there, it's just something quick that's going on your page. And uh, so you have your paragraph and you know, this could be section or if you're doing it in an article, you know, art, article, P only child or whatever it is. Um, for this demo though, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And what I'm going to say is font size is for rem, and then it just changes the font size of that paragraph. And so yeah, I think this is one that wouldn't come up terribly often, but you don't have to, you know, the fact that you can see if something is an only child, I think that's super cool. And just to show you that it is working, if I come here and I add a second paragraph, uh, lorem 20 or 50, 10, whatever, doesn't matter, we just need another paragraph, it's not styling these. They're not the only child. There's multiple children in here. So it is styling this one only if there's one paragraph. I find that really, really interesting um, and really cool. I, again, I don't think it's one of those ones that's gonna come up all the time, but it, I've seen things where looking for these types of situations with sort of a complex JavaScript solution where you're trying to die, you're analyzing the DOM, looking for when something is the only child and it's a certain type of thing. And it can get really complex and you can do it with one line of CSS. So uh, one of those things that I guarantee you won't use every project, but you're gonna be so happy to know about it when it does come up and when you do need it. Uh, and the other one is actually really, really similar to this. And we're gonna do this one with a block quote. So we'll say block quote, and instead of only child, it's gonna be only of type. And so this is very similar to only child. Um, the difference between only of type and only um, child is let's turn all these back on. And the when we have all of this here right now, if I did a block quote only of type, and what I'm gonna do here is actually section, just to make it a bit more obvious what's happening. And on here, maybe we say font size is two rem and color is red, just so we can see it really clearly. And this block quote here should change because it's the only block quote within that section. But let's say for some reason we have more block quotes in one section. We can come here and say block quote and lorem 15, just so we have some content in there. There we go. And by doing that now, I have these two block quotes and they're not styled the same because it's not the only of type. With the only of type, you can have a ton of stuff, but it's the only element it's the only block quote, and then it's the only one, that, the only block quote that is in there, and then that's gonna qualify. Whereas the only child, it could, I mean, you could even do a star only child here, and it's gonna look for anything that's the only child. So that could be really, really uh, interesting and useful uh, in different circumstances. Now, I'm not saying that I would wanna use this for block quotes in this sense, but again, this is one of those times where you might have something where if it's the, uh, the only child might not work for you because maybe you have a section with, um, let's just say here in my article, I do have an H1 and the H1 is my article title here. So let's go and get rid of all of this once again. And so if I did my paragraph only child um, and ignoring that, the paragraph only child is not gonna work now because I have an H1 within my article. And so, and again, usually you'd probably do something like that, article, paragraph, only child, it's not working. And then there you go, oh, I, I wanted to do that thing Kevin told me about, I thought it'd be cool. Well, that's where the only of type could come in, not only of child, only of type. Um, there we go. <laughs> and then that paragraph will get styled because it's the only paragraph within the article. So there is a bit of a distinction between the two. I think they could both be used in interesting ways, depending on the circumstances. And again, they're not something you'll use in every single project, but they are ones, but they're ones that could really help you out in the right circumstance. And the target one that I talked about, I made a video a little while ago on how you can make a CSS only light box using uh, the target. And if you want to check that out, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. Thank you guys also very much. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.